and welcome back to Dukas Copy TV. Now, if I said to you crowdfunding, would you know what it is, what's it for, and where perhaps it fits into the world of finance? Well, with me in the studio to help me understand all this is uh, Luigi Matroni, founding director of Lovin.com. Thank you, Thomas. Luigi, welcome. Uh, when it comes to investing your money, uh, how does um, uh, this sort of so-called crowdfunding uh, fit into the portfolio and, and what's the risk? Well, actually, let me start with uh, clarifying, first of all, what are the types of crowdfunding available to people. You go from uh, uh, reward-based crowdfunding, donation crowdfunding, equity-based crowdfunding, and uh, debt-based crowdfunding. Now, when it comes to investing, investors will really look at the last two, equity and debt. Both of them imply that there is a, a return on the investment for the shareholder, either in the equity part or through an interest rate if it is a debt. Now, obviously, crowdfunding is a high-risk investment. So it falls for investors into the part of their portfolio where they're willing to take high risks for potential high reward. However, in this case, we're dealing with, uh, in general, small companies, medium small companies, if not even startups. So the risk can be even higher. And uh, unless investors are uh, um, aware of the industry where they are going to invest their money, unless they are aware also of the platforms that they're choosing to invest their money, I would say it's pretty much of a bet. So the recommendation in this case is uh, for the investors, it's definitely a good way to spend the money of that uh, high risk part of a portfolio management but make sure you understand the platform that you're using to to, for the transaction of your money towards the startups. Okay, so c what, what sort of, can you give us a very brief overview of some of the options that I might have if I was looking to invest in, in crowdfunding? Well, if you stay in Europe, uh, um, first of all, there's a variety of platforms available today. And to be honest, the industry is still very young in this sense. So you have new platforms coming out uh, every month, more or less. Now, the European Union, and this is the interesting thing, has taken a stake about last month saying we want to um, help crowdfunding platforms and investors finding the right regulation for the industry to stabilize. Okay, So this is a great thing if it happens, obviously. It's a good intention. If it happens, the industry basically will go through a phase of uh, clarification of the rules and the, regula and the regulations to make the investment and be safe at least from what it com when it comes to the legal part. Mm -hmm. So I would say to, to the investors interested, um, check the European crowdfunding network because that's a good resource to start understanding who's playing uh, in Europe uh, in this territory. Okay, now, um, we, we, you know, the last years have seen an increase in the usage of, of crowdfunding to s finance startups. Um, uh, today we're seeing uh, crowdfunding um, also used to finance projects to establish companies. So how's that working? Well, actually, so we shift on, on the other side of crowdfunding from the entrepreneur or the company side in this case. And crowdfunding historically has born to finance uh, startups. So um, in general, you go into the reward type of platform uh, in this case, because uh, very often even uh, established companies are using crowdfunding to fund a new project. So what's at stake here? If you have a company and you want to launch a new product, a new collection, a new lineup of uh, uh, goods, you can use crowdfunding platforms to test the water, right. basically. So you understand if the market is responsive to all your products with a limited uh, low risk, in fact. So you can uh, gain and uh, earn money before you produce your goods, which obviously for production costs is uh, a big advantage. You can have a small audience that is interested in your product and pushes out the message afterwards. So ultimately, it's a great experimentation opportunity. Okay, so the crowdfunding then, as you said, is essentially a marketing tool or can be a marketing tool as well. Um, what advice would you give entrepreneurs um, that, that, you know, that are willing, you know, if I was an entrepreneur, what yeah. advice would you give me if I'm entering into this area for the first time? Well, in fact, it's, uh, it's a relatively low cost uh, uh, of entry opportunity to advertise your uh, startup, your new product, uh, your company. However, it doesn't mean it's easy. Mm -hmm. When you approach crowdfunding for the first time, first of all, geographical location matters because the US, where crowdfunding platforms uh, are thriving, uh, have totally different regulations from Europe. So you want to go looking for European platforms. Understanding also how you're going to get the money that uh, uh, 
people are going to invest into your project is important. Are they going to be taxed? Are you are going to have uh, legal uh, procedures? So you want to understand really the platform. And then there are uh, big players in this field like Kickstarter, Indiegogo and others also in Europe uh, that can facilitate the process. But the last advice I would say as anything into the marketing field, if it's the first time, look into this platform who's doing it really, really well and study how they are structuring the offer, presenting the product, the type of content they're using, how they are interacting with uh, the small audience that they build over time and decode what you can reapply so you learn and hopefully it can work also for you. Well, Luigi, thank you very much for coming into the studio today. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Uh, that's uh, your intro there on crowdfunding. Stay with us, though. We'll continue to bring you updates and interviews throughout the day here on Duke's Copy TV. But from now, from me and from Luigi, bye-bye.